everyone who's joining us. Hi. Um, if you're wondering why I am dressed with bits of stuff all over me. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, little friend. It's just come to say hello. This is Zorro. Um, if you're wondering why I got stuff all over, it's because it's World Book Day today and I am dressed as my book. <laughs> actually dressed yes. as a book. Yes, I'm actually dressed as my own book, Quick Crafts, for parents who think they're head crafts. But that's Confused. not what we're talking no, Zorro, about today. Don't drink the paint water! <laughs> today we are here to talk about David Hockney and we are going to be joined by Tracy from The Bonnie Mob who is watching. Hi Tracy! There she is! Hello. Hi Tracy, how are you? This is Reese. Um, Hi uh, Reese. And we've got all our painting things out, we're really excited, can't Excellent. wait. So we've turned the kitchen into a makeshift um, art, uh, art studio today. Oh, fantastic. That's Very so excited. Cool. Yeah. We have Frida here who is wearing, oh, and Zorro who has attacked me again. <laughs> um, <laughs> Frida is wearing some items from the new Bonnie Mob collection. We're looking good, Frida, looking good. <laughs> the latest Bonnie Mob collection is um, a kids collection and it's inspired by David Hockney. And so you've got the pool party print and then there's some other cool things in the collection like as well. Yeah, we've got a really cool underwater print that is very much inspired yeah. by the paintings that David Hockney did on his actual pool floor. Yeah, um, which I'm going to talk you So talk that is yeah, uh, on a denim, that. that's really cool. That yeah, is. so very much trying to take the elements of David Hockney and find childlike features in them and then turn it oh, into something that kids awesome. might like. So it was a really good one to work on, actually. I loved it. Oh, oh brilliant. Yay! All right, thank you so much. So today <laughs> we're, you've inspired me with your um, David Hockney collection to uh oh someone says i'm cutting out a bit okay we'll try and i'm not sure why let me yeah know you're cutting bit. out a little bit i oh, thought no. it was me shall i shall i leave now and then leave you to get on with the uh, yeah let's do that the and, job then, in hand. and then at the so end thank you everybody for joining <laughs> and i can't wait to see your artwork we're going to be showing ours at the end excellent and at, at the end if you want to um show us your artwork you can pop on at the end bye oh. So what we're going to do, what we're going to need today is we are going to need some paper. You can have um, watercolour paper, arty paper. I've just got printer paper. Um, you're going to need some uh, a ruler. You're going to need a pencil. And you are going to need some paints, especially white paint. So if you don't have any paint, I've got a kitten on my back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be adorable. Oh, what are you doing? Um, if you, it doesn't matter if you don't have lots of colours of paint, but white would be useful. Um, if you just have felt tips or coloured pencils, that's also fine. You can also join in, so don't stress too much. <laughs> David Hockney is a British pop artist, and he's probably the most well-known British pop artist. And he moved to, from... Well, I'll tell you in a minute. Um, he moved from England to Los Angeles in the 60s and he loved the sunny lifestyle of Hollywood. Now, a pop artist, pop artists came around in the 60s and they were around until the sort of late 70s as well. And then David Hockney has continued making art right up until now when he's in his 80s. So the era that he became most famous in was the pop art era. And that was, remember when we looked at... Um, Andy Warhol yeah. a little while ago I forgot. and we looked at the world of art and design coming together and the world of celebrity and the world of um, pattern design <laughs> and pop art He's fine. someone's got lots of white paint excellent pop art was an era where things like television and celebrities and labels and graphic design and fashion really influenced art <laughs> So lots of the art was really colourful, it drew it, um, its imagery from advertising and stuff like that. So David Hockney became famous for painting swimming pools and it's really interesting that when you, when you look at artworks of California, his artwork always comes up and he's an even American, he's not even from California, but it kind of took an Englishman to come there and see the beauty of the sort of architecture and the swimming pools to make it really famous. This is the first painting he ever did of a swimming pool. He did, and he was trying to capture capture the duality of the straight lines, straight concrete edges, and the wobbly movement of the water. So, 
Can you see that he's used very, very straight lines for some of it and very, very wobbly lines for the other part of it? So it's kind of like looking at opposites. And that's called duality. So that means there's two parts and of something. It's called... Sometimes it's called contrast. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got two different ways of doing something. Something straight with something wiggly, something hot with something cold, something dark with something light. So that comes up quite a bit in his artwork. I think this is a study for a painting. Whoa, so this why is, is just, that guy naked? This is just the sketch. There we go. Why is there one guy who's naked and one guy is fully dressed? Because he's because in it's contrast. contrast. Contrast, that's that duality again. All right, so sometimes in his paintings, we have these ideas that it looks a little bit like there's a story behind what's happening, but he doesn't give us any clues as to what that is. That's what makes his art kind of interesting and mysterious, even though we're looking at things that look fairly normal. And sometimes he did portraits of two people in one painting, but the people often felt quite disconnected from each other. Um, and he would also plan his paintings very, very carefully. You can see the grid that he's drawn here to make sure everything's in the right place. He's cut out the man standing up, moved him around a bit. Sometimes his paintings would take him two years to make. No, please what? don't don't drink my tea. Okay. <laughs> so this is the final artwork. Oh, that's that really did. good. Though. That's way better. This painting sold for ninety million dollars, and in two thousand and eighteen, it was the most expensive painting ever sold by a living artist. Funny. There's two men in the painting. There's the man who is. Fully dressed. fully dressed and there's the man who's naked, naked and swimming then you've also got these straight lines but you've also got the wobbly lines you've got the sort of curviness of nature alongside the grid like shapes of the concrete so there's opposites in there so the story behind this painting is the man in the suit is actually David Hockney's boyfriend and when he started painting um, this painting they were partners and then they split up in the middle of him painting this painting. And so there's a bit of a mystery as to who is the man under the water. Is that David Hockney? Is that him painting them maybe towards the end of their relationship when they started to feel quite separate to each other and they, maybe they weren't getting along very well and it was as if one person was in one place and one person was another. Or maybe the man under the water is his ex-partner's new partner, someone who feels quite separate to him and a bit mysterious so he's under the water so sometimes when you see a picture um there's a story behind it and you find out about what was going on with the artist when the picture happened so now we're just going to have a look at just some graphic ways that Whoa. david hockney made artworks look like swimming pools so in this one he Wait, was it's david a, hockney gay yes David Hockney is gay. Uh -huh. So a lot of his paintings are with two men in them. But when he did these paintings, it was actually illegal to be gay in the UK. So a lot of his, his paintings, he couldn't show two men hugging or kissing or in a relationship. So the paintings that he showed publicly, although he did paint that sometimes as for more private pieces, but for the public works, he had to show men having this loving relationship but standing separate to each other. So that's also part of what he's doing here in this artwork. I just noticed that he's not completely naked. He's, he's not completely undies. naked, he's wearing undie. There we go. Okay, so moving on. This is a drawing. We can look at how he has layered the different parts of the drawing. So he has done pencil cross hatching to make a grid that looks like the tiles and that's all looks like it's been ruled by a ruler and then added in these really free swirly bits to be the water so there we have two processes don't we we have one with the ruler and one that feels free and that's what we're going to do with our artworks here's one of someone in the nudie rudy <laughs> <laughs> he painted lots that of people in the nudie rudy in this painting we can see a different way of painting water so he's, again, he's got the very straight architecture and the only things with curvy or wib wibbly wobbly lines are the water, the plant and the person. So all the things that are natural have wavy lines and all the things that are man-made have straight lines. And here's another way that he has attempted to do water. So he's really interested in how do you paint water? 
Yeah, it's hard to paint with. It's hard to paint water. But again, we have these very yeah. straight, very kind of cold buildings. And the people are sort of taking refuge in the water. They're but finding that, solace in the water because it's they're, they're kind of They're not like realistic images. They're like... No, yeah, they're not realistic. Do you know what they are? Stylistic. Yeah. Yeah, because they're simplified. So now I'm going to show you which is what is probably <laughs> David Hockney's most famous painting. It's so cool. And this is though. called A Bigger Splash. Now this one has captured the attention and the imagination of so many people because of its simplicity and because there is such a contrast between the straight lines of the building and then the splash itself is really explosive, isn't it? Yeah. But and it's a moment. Here. It's a real moment where something is hit and there's movement but everything else is completely still. Now about this painting he said, when you photograph a splash, you're freezing a moment and it becomes something else. I realised that a, fra a splash could never be seen this way in real life. It happens too quickly and I was amused by this, so I painted it in a very, very slow way. So he actually took a long time to paint that splash. Although it looks like he's just thrown paint across the page, he actually painted it quite slowly. Um, so as he went on, his swimming pool paintings got even simpler, and I really love this one. Whoa, that's, that's so, so cool. good! Now, if you hadn't seen any of his other paddling pool paintings, paddling pool, swimming pool paintings, um, you might not know that that's what this is. It just looks like some cool shapes and textures. But now we know what he paints, we know that it's a swimming pool from above with an inflatable ring. You can definitely tell that ring. You can. Here he is. Here is David Hockney painting his own swimming pool with these big curvy swirls. So he was so interested in how water worked and how to capture water that he ended up painting the bottom of his swimming pool and seeing if that changed the way that he would paint water. Because the curvy curves in the bottom of the pool, once the water was all moving, that would add another texture to the water. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, and he so cool. used this technique to paint the swimming pool at the Roosevelt Hotel, which is in Los Angeles. Oh, um, and this is the final image I'm going to show you before we do some art. <gasps> that and is so cool! This is Amazing. cool, isn't it? So this That's is, Olympic Games. Yeah, this is a poster for the LA Olympics, which was in 1984. Oh, yeah. But that's a picture of the... When I was only four years old. So he started making these artworks in the 60s and he continued to do them up until... This was done in 1984 where he started to experiment with photography. And he used this style of photography where he took lots of photos of one thing and then put them together like a puzzle. And it looks like someone's underwater. So he's done the same for a room here and it sort of looks like the room is underwater. Oh my God, it does. But it's made up of lots and lots of different photos all stuck together in a collage, which in that itself is very cool and could be its own um, art club separate to the swimming pool art club which maybe we'll do um, but yeah so he's, his style became so iconic that everyone knew when it was a David Hockney piece mm. do you know what iconic means? it means like it means like it stands out it means I it forgot. stands out so much and it has it's such an individual style that it gets recognised wherever you go. So David Hockney's artwork has become iconic, especially the swimming pools. And that's why people like Tracy see things and they think that would be really good inspiration for a t-shirt. And the style can be translated into so many different things because it's iconic. But now we're gonna make our own pool paintings. So the things that we have looked at in his paintings, can you guys think of the elements that we've looked at? So you know when we do water. art club, water, yes. One of the elements we're gonna use is water. Something else? Water. Nature. Nature, yeah. Grass, green stuff. Yeah, grass and green stuff. Humans. Comes into humans, if you feel like it. There was, isn't always a human, but there is sometimes it, evidence also. of a human. Like the splash. And like a rubber ring or a splash. Or. What else? Um, a building. What was that funny word that I said earlier? That's Poop. a bit like contrast. <laughs> oh, um. 
duality. Yeah, duality. Okay, so we're going to do a picture with contrasts in it. Some things are straight, some things are wiggly. Um, so what we need to do is to draw our pool paintings. I'm going to show you some examples of some that I have done earlier. Um, and we saw a few different ways that David Hockney has painted water. So you can choose any one of those. I think the white splash is probably the most fun, but there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing some very simple shapes on a page using a ruler. Then but we're going to. The bush isn't a ruler. No, the bush isn't a ruler. <laughs> You're right. And then we're going to paint over it. Paint them in. So we're just doing the square bits of the picture. Then we're going to add in our nature or our swirly bits. I don't know if it's possible for me to draw with a kitten on my shoulder. <laughs> You've got a kitten on your shoulder. Okay. Um, so we're going to add in our swirly bits. If you don't have paint, this is one that I've done using felt tip pens, which works quite well. And then once we have done our painting, this is another one I did with the ring on it. <laughs> um, go sit down. Then we can add our splash. So once you get, I'm going to go through it very slowly in a minute. Once you get your picture to looking something like this. But or that's a that's like one this. that's, that's a mixture of two of them. That's copied the one with the ring. That's that has a copied the one with the ring. Two. Then we can do our splash, and I'm gonna do a splash for you live right now. I'm gonna be really bold and brave, and the thing I love about this sort of painting is you have to be brave about it and you can't be timid. And the final part of our artwork will be adding the splash which I'm going to do right now which is you ready wait do we need to do the splash you don't have to do the splash because you can do squiggles if you like there we go that is my splash I want to do squiggles. that was very simple yeah okay so that is the final piece so you'll end up with an artwork that looks something a bit like this we need a ruler and a pencil. I am going to draw a border on mine to make it a kind of a square, but you can do any shape you like really. Have a think about where your pull is going to start. I think a good spot to do it is just slightly higher than the centre line of your square or rectangle. My square. So we're going to draw that as That's our pull. That's it, very good. That's my square. And then we're going to have a think about the edge of the pull. So in all of his paintings, there is like a little, a little edge that we see. Um, just a little edge bit so let's what do that just below the line we've just done um. we can do an edge like that and then we've got that little bit of sort of tiled bit and then we have the surface of the water sometimes the surface of the water is slightly wibbly wobbly like on this one, I've done it slightly. Slightly wobbly wobbly. <laughs> so, you could do it a bit like that. Now, I'm going to add a building into mine. What did you do? I just did a line that was a little bit wibbly wobbly mm -hmm. under there. I'm going to add a building into mine. And then I'm going to do big window here as well because often modernist houses have massive windows great big sliding doors and windows and that's what lots of the houses in LA look like compared to houses in England at the same time I think David Hockney was quite excited to see such different housing okay so that's the sort of basic square parts of my picture I've got one here that I've already painted 
You can do any colours you like, really. I mean, you are the boss of your painting. You don't have to follow what David Hockney did. You can say, no, David Hockney, I'm going to paint yellow water if you want. Elliot has his pool house. He's got a little chair with an umbrella. It's very <laughs> And he's got a little diving board, which looks brilliant. Here is Frieda's. Make sure you show the edge, figure out where the edge of the pool is. So maybe draw a line here across the ground and then another line to show the pool. Hello. Okay. No one is painting any bushes yet. Okay. We're just doing the straight bits. So the bush bits come afterwards. Stop crying like a baby. Elliot. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to paint all of these bits in so that um, we have our sort of background. We're going to first of all look at all the straight parts of the painting first. So your image will be divided up into blocks. So now I'm going to start painting some... But they're not building blocks. They are, well they're buildings that look like blocks. I'm just going to do some plants now. The plants are a little bit more free, but what you will find whenever there are plants in David Hockney's paintings, they're often very straight across at the bottom. And on this one as well, the plants are cut off from the path because the plants grow sep in a separate place to the concrete. It's quite severe. Plants are not allowed on the concrete. That sounds mean. So I might put a piece of paper here to make sure my plants don't escape onto the concrete. The sky. You've done the sky. Well done, sweetheart. That's very good. The now. sky is a bit splashy. A bit splashy. <laughs> no, but literally, look. Let me see. No, that's really good. You've done it really neatly. But why is the house floating? Ah. <laughs> that's okay. No, I was doing it like... You're doing that space and the, the house... That's fine. What you can do is you can paint the house colour further down or yours can just be a cool surrealist house. Hello. <laughs> Ask yourself, what would Frida Kahlo do? She'd paint something weird. She'd just go with the weirdness. <laughs> okay? Okay, so I'm going to attempt now to draw a person swimming in the pool, I think. And I'm going to do a cat looking down at them. And the cat is going to be very disapproving. The person is going to be in the nudie Rudy swimming. With their butt showing. With their butt showing. <laughs> And they're going to be all wibbly wobbly because they're under the water. This time, instead of doing the splash, which I did here, the big splash explosion, I'm going to do some more white lines this time to represent my water, because David Hockney did so many different styles of how to draw, how to paint. David was A very judgmental cat sitting here <laughs> on the edge of the pool. Looking down at Taco. Looking in, thinking, what are you doing, you silly human? You s stupid human. <laughs> silly human. So there we, there we go. That is my judgmental cat with David Hockney in the swimming pool. Are you sure it's David Hockney? That is David Hockney, yes, that one. This is... A splash. Someone has jumped into the pool. That's my big splash. Oh, here we are. I'm going to do a big splash. Are we ready? Ready for the splash? 
Splash! Ooh. That's quite fun. That looks a bit like the top of a white cactus. <laughs> it does. Well, David Hockney said he painted his very slowly, even though it looks like it's painted very quickly. It looks like in his splash painting he spent days and days getting all the straight lines right and then just went <coughs> like that. But apparently the splash was took him a very long time as well. So there we go, we have another splash. I'm gonna have it on YouTube too. So thank you so much for joining us today. That has been so much fun. Um, and thank you to Tracy from the Bonnie Mob uh, for inspiring this art club. It's been so good to see her beautiful designs. Frida, can you come and show off Tracy's beautiful new collection? Ooh, ooh, here she is in her beautiful- I've got a paintbrush. Pool party t-shirt. <laughs> Hey, Tracy is still here. Hi, Tracy. Let's see if Tracy wants to show us her artwork. Here she is. Here she is. Hi. I think she's coming. Let's see what Tracy has done. There she is. Thank you so Hi. much. We've loved it. How are we getting on, Tracy? Oh, I've, I've finished mine. Oh, wow. I've got a flamingo. That's it? That's amazing. Oh, that's flamingo with Alice in the pool. Oh, and then I went a bit. Polish on the on the splash. Sure, why not? I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And then Reese is in the middle of his. He's not quite finished, but he's doing oh, that's the pool beautiful. at the pool at Grandma's house. Oh. So this is all from photos from our holidays. Oh, that's fantastic. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, well so done. So thank guys. you so much. That's brilliant. I've had such a good good fun today. Yeah, it's good fun, isn't it? It's nice when yeah, you really good. sort of get into yeah. it. And I always, I'm trying to make the classes about an hour long, but I always end up sitting here pottering about for an extra hour. <laughs> for yeah. Yeah. Work, so. And thank you, Frida and Elliot, for um, making it so brilliant. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye everybody who's joined in. It's been lovely seeing you all. Yeah, thank Bye. you so much, everybody. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.